Mr. Chief Justice, and may it please the court. The issue here is more than a simple case of abuse by the city of Shawnee. Rather, it strikes at the very core of the foundations of this country. Del Gribble is a veteran, and upon returning and exercising the rights which he has defended for this country, his own rights were violated. The city of Shawnee violated his 14th Amendment due process rights, and as a direct result, Del Gribble will get up every morning and will go through life without the use of his left hand or his left arm. It will be shown that Officer Edward Wilson, a police officer and a trained paramedic, a first responder, was deliberately indifferent towards Mr. Gribble's medical needs. It will be shown that one, Mr. Gribble did have an objectively sufficiently serious medical need, and two, that Officer Wilson was in fact in a culpable state of mind when he deprived him of that need. But this was nine o'clock at night in January where it's dark out, the lights have been turned out. How was Officer Wilson to know that there was blood in what was spit out? Yes, Your Honor. When it comes to the blood being spat, we do recognize that the record does not indicate that he did see did not see that he did see the blood. However, it does not indicate that he did not see it either. Now when combined with the other factors that he did witness the spinning of blood, and in particular the screaming of Mr. Gribble's son, it would be at least Officer Wilson's responsibility to simply look at Mr. Gribble and say, are you okay? Well, let's assume that he did see the blood. What medical evidence is there to connect that with the, uh, the brain condition that he developed later on, or that he had later on? He yes, Your Honor. When it comes to the spitting of the blood, if he had seen the blood, this would, re this would show at least some sort of an injury that Again, Officer Wilson should at least ask Mr. Gribble, are you Not okay? uncommon kinds of injuries that you normally experience when arresting non-compliant people. Yes, they Your Honor. Bite their lip, they get, you know, whatever, scratch here and there. Yes, Your Honor. So connect the dots. You've got an officer who observes Mr. Gribble spitting blood. How does that tell him that there's a serious injury that needs to be taken care of at that point? Yes, Your Honor. Whenever it comes to the spinning of blood, it can be combined with the other factors, which should have put Officer Wilson on notice of some need of a serious medical injury. Those factors are that, one, whenever Officer Wilson was pursuing Mr. Gaines, he was in direct proximity to Mr. Gaines crashing into Mr. Gribble and knocking Mr. Gribble to the ground. Now, had he seen Mr. Gribble strike his head on the tree, this would show an obvious recognition of the fact that Officer Wilson did know that he had sustained a head trauma. Yes. Now, you're, you're urging us uh, to determine that he should have made a diagnosis? No, Your Honor. What, what, we, what, the, what the respondents urge in this matter, Your Honor, is that one thing that Officer Wilson, that the layperson standard should not be applied for Officer Wilson, that perhaps a greater standard should be applied there due to the fact that Officer Wilson is a trained paramedic. So what well, should he have done? What, if, if you're saying he had recognition, I mean, there's a maximum two-hour delay. What, what evidence is there that any uh, quicker action would have made any difference in this case? Uh, Your Honor, I, I do not know enough medically to say that something on the scene could have stopped this. However, Officer Wilson did have a duty to at least make sure that Mr. Gribble was okay. It would, it would take a matter of seconds for him to either walk up to Mr. Gribble and ask him if he was all right or simply depress the radio on his, the button on his radio and call for backup or a paramedic or someone to come and examine Mr. Gribble as his son requested. But in an objective evaluation, you do this initial look over, you don't find anything. And so What's the answer to that? I mean, he, if he does, you're saying, well, he's a paramedic, and, and he's a paramedic and he's a police officer. Well, what duty, if any, beyond that should he have? He does an objective, I don't see anything wrong with him. Yes, Your Honor. Um, and for example, in, the, in Salazar versus City of Chicago, it was very similar to this incident in that the, there was an injury that was not recognized by the police. However, in that case, there was a cursory examination performed by the paramedics and the police officers on scene directly after um, Mr. Salazar received his injuries. Now, with, when it comes to Mr. Gribble and Officer Wilson, Officer Wilson did not perform any sort of cursory examination on Mr. Gribble. He Does the city have a policy with respect to that practice? Um, not that I'm aware of, Your Honor. Um, he simply ignored the signs that there could have been something wrong with Mr. Gribble and ignored the cries of Mr. Gribble's son that his father needed medical treatment. 
And because of that, he there, there was no examination here. A cursory examination is exactly what should have taken place. However, he refused to do so. The finders of fact, and we assume they were properly instructed, yes, found yeah. against your client on this claim. Pardon, Your Honor? Found against your, they found against your client on this claim, the, the trier's of fact, right? And that was reversed by the 14th Circuit. Yes, Your Honor. Why should we review those facts found in the district court? Because this is a constitutional case, Your Honor, it should be reviewed de novo. And because of the but fact... the constitutional question depends upon the findings of fact. Yes, Your Honor. Right? Yes, Your Honor. And Why this, are we going to be substituting our opinions of fact for that of the finders of fact? In this case, Your Honor, the, there is enough of an argument of the facts that it should be reviewed by this court in order to ensure that the correct facts are the ones which are reviewed. Now, when it comes to the... Excuse me, the petitioner has made an argument that Officer Wilson's son had, it seems, almost too much knowledge of his father to be considered a layperson. Um, the policy coming out of that is, quite frankly, a bad policy, Your Honors, to, to say that a family member who there are a few better to recognize the mental condition of Mr. Gribble than his own son are, should not be relied upon by police officers and can be ignored by first responders and police officers in determining whether there is some sort of a need there would result in perhaps even worse cases than this. Now, this court has held that deliberate medical indifference is an obvious violation for a prisoner of the Eighth Amendment, of his Eighth Amendment rights, and in the city of Revere said that a pretrial detainee has rights at least as great, if not greater, than that of a prisoner. Well, so, so therefore, are you arguing that we should allow your client a lesser burden, in other words, less than deliberate indifference, something less, and if so, what? No, Your Honor, we are not. What we are arguing is that deliberate indifference should be applied here, and we are arguing that the layperson standard will be sufficient to demonstrate that Officer Wilson did show deliberate indifference, and if the court did elect to use a higher standard due to Officer Wilson's professional training as a license, as a paramedic, which in the majority of states, a paramedic is required to be licensed by the state and is therefore a professional, it would again show that he, there was deliberate indifference there. Well, it seems that if, if the city has put out a uh, licensed paramedic as a police officer to make this arrest, they've kind of gone above and beyond in providing protection for those citizens that wind up being arrested, haven't they? Your Honor, the fact that they did put him out there does show that they were concerned. However, Officer Wilson's actions in and of, them in and of themselves did show a deliberate indifference towards that medical So are you need. abandoning your claim against the city? Pardon, Your Honor? Are you abandoning your claim against the city on this part? No, of the Your case? Honor. We are claiming that Officer Wilson, as an actor of the city, thereby extending the liability to the city. Now, Officer Wilson made, could have easily made the inference that Mr. Gribble was injured. This is evidenced by the fact that of Mr. Gribble's injuries in and of themselves. How do we know that he actually made that inference? Uh, by the, his comment of the spitting of blood on, uh, to stop cleaning up what Mr. Gribble spit on the ground. Now, the petitioners claim that Officer Wilson could have simply seen it as spit and had been telling him not to clean up spit, but in a public park, there's no reason to tell someone that they wouldn't be cleaning up their spit. Spit's not something that would generally need to be cleaned up. Blood, on the other hand, is something that would undeniably be needed to clean up due to the hazard that it could pose to others. Because of that fact, Officer Wilson showed that he was aware that there was something going on with Mr. Gribble. Now, as to whether he knew that this was a head trauma, that is not, we, we do not know that he knew that. However, because of the large number of issues, the, his, him seeing him fall into the tree and potentially seeing him hit his head on the tree, the spitting of blood on the ground, and his son's cries for help for his father, who at the time that the young Mr. Gribble was asking for help for his father. The record does indicate that Mr. Gribble was beginning to act in a rather confused manner. So had Officer Wilson simply looked over towards Mr. Gribble's son and even just walked over there, it is, can be inferred that he most likely would have noticed that Mr. Gribble needed some sort of attention, that something was wrong. Instead of doing that, however, he simply chose to continue to ignore Mr. Gribble's needs. You're saying from a totality of the circumstances, he should have done something? Yes, Your Honor. 
at the at the very least calling for radio backup or something of that nature. If he was worried for his own safety in this instance, he should have radioed for backup. He should have radioed for paramedics or another officer to come and to examine him. Now, as a first responder, Officer Gribble, again, should be high to, held to a higher standard. We have seen countless times within the tragedies that have befallen this nation from the tornadoes in Joplin to Hurricane Katrina, the police officers of today do usually have a, at least enough medical training to know that someone needs to get to an ambulance or to a hospital. Now, Officer Wilson didn't use that training and he did not use his training as a paramedic. He again, simply ignored Mr. Gribble's medical needs. Now, am I, am I confused on the facts, Mr. Ryan, or I, I thought somewhere along the way within this two hour period prior to his transport that paramedics did examine him and cleared him to be transported. Uh, I do not believe that is reflected okay, so in the facts, not, Your Honor. Okay, so that's not, I am confused on that. I, possibly, okay. Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, it, How does your case, counsel, compared to some of the other cases we've seen where, you know, you've got the um, Blackmore case with a two-day delay, you've got the four-hour delay, the 10-hour delay. We've got a two-hour delay here. Um, I would tend to think that that might work against your argument. So why don't you address that based on these cases and what they found? How's your case different? I understand your point there, Your Honor. Um, when it comes to our case, the primary difference is that when in the majority of those cases, uh, Salazar and Blackmore, as you stated, whenever the officers were put on were put on notice to that claim and they ignored it. Now, in Salazar, for example, he there was an examination made there. There was some sort of attention given to the inmate, however, the inmate or the pretrial detainee. In this case, Officer Wilson completely ignored the notice that he that was given towards him, and essentially completely ignored the situation. Now to allow a police officer to essentially be ignorant of what is going on around him sets a very dangerous precedent in that to say that a police officer can simply walk around and act even less than the average layperson would is a very dangerous policy. So your, your argument seems to be that we would uh, elevate the standard of care or the duty of care of this officer based upon his actions. Your Honor, we would like to see a higher standard of care be required of the police officer. However, we would also contend that the average layperson would have been placed on notice by Mr. Gribble's actions and the circumstances surrounding it. Now, and, and, and addressing that, now the layperson standard has been held by the third, sixth, seventh, and eighth circuits to be the standard to be applied for a 14th Amendment due process claim. Now, when it comes to the average layperson, if Mr. Gribble had been standing on the sidewalk and someone saw him fall, then saw him spit blood on the ground or even just spit on the ground, and then had his son screaming, my father needs medical help, I don't think any average layperson would simply walk by or ignore the situation. And that is exactly what Officer Wilson did here. But, but isn't the situation different? I mean, this wasn't... Uh, something occurring on a calm street corner. This was occurring in a park uh, which could be argued to be chaotic. And, and, and the concern is when you look at the context, I mean, context has to be factored into this. And um, I, I hear you arguing for a heightened standard. Uh, is, that, is that standard at all? Uh, do you factor into that heightened standard the idea that you might lower the standard given the context of the situation, given that there was a chaotic uh, atmosphere that was going on, given the number of individuals that were there to which he was responding. I understand your point, Your Honor. Um, in this case, with, with regard to Officer Wilson specifically, um, we would argue that the standard would remain the same because as a first responder, he is trained to deal with chaotic situations. He is trained to deal specifically with what was going on here. And in terms of the average layperson, even in the chaotic nature of the situation, if the average layperson had seen Mr. Gribble fall, be knocked down, had then seen him spit blood on the ground, and then had heard his son yelling for help for his father, the average layperson would have at least asked if Mr. Gribble was okay. Now, we're not asking for an officer to put himself at risk here. We are simply asking him to do something. Officer Wilson did nothing to try and help Mr. Gribble. He simply ignored everything that should have put him on notice. And it is for the, this reason that the respondent asks that the 14th Circuit's ruling be affirmed. Thank you.